News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And a wonderful morning to you. This is Newsline, live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Clamble. Uh, my guest this morning uh, will be Dr. Nalinda Jatissa uh, from the JVP, a member of parliament from the JVP. Uh, unfortunately, he's uh, stuck in a bit of traffic. He will be here in a few minutes' time. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I'd like to update you. Uh, the uh, all-important ship is here in Sri Lanka. It's uh, moored now, and uh, the checking of the uh, parcel of oil on board is now ongoing. Um, so we expect that, uh, provided the test results are fine uh, and meets the standards of the CPC, then they will start uh, discharging that load uh, soon. And hopefully, uh, towards the end of the day, we might see a, uh, in an improvement in the situation of the fuel supply. And uh, in the island today is uh, the story of uh, how very powerful the president's speech yesterday in terms of uh, the need for punishing bond racketeers. And uh, Kushan Subasinghe has written the, the story in the island uh, and quotes the president as saying that all those responsible for treasury bond scams perpetrated in February 2015 and in March 2016 uh, <coughs> Uh, will be brought to justice. And of course that's a, a very important consideration considering that it has uh, been estimated by experts that the, uh, the, the loss of the, on the issuance of the bond, the February 2015 bond at uh, any rate, uh, using the interest rates that were jacked up artificially by Arjuna Mahendran in collaboration with his mates uh, by three uh, percentage points by 3.15 actually uh, is set to cost uh, the people, you and I, and everybody else, 145 billion rupees, which is, uh, of course, not an amount that needs to be sniffed at or can be sniffed at. And uh, the, some of the other stories also on the front page of the island is that uh, Mangala Samarivira. Um, uh, will present the 2018 budget today uh, at 3 o'clock. Um, and uh, there's obviously, this is uh, Mangala Samarivira's maiden budget, the 72nd budget of the post independent Sri Lanka, of post independent Sri Lanka. Um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, the, uh, the, the budget, of course, is something that we are all going to be looking forward to. Um, <clears throat> Because obviously uh, the cost of living is going up and up and up, and we're wondering uh, what the what they're going to do. And uh, we're joined um, on the telephone by the um, news editor of the island newspaper, Mr. Shamindra Ferdinando. Very good morning to you, Shamindra. Good morning, Varaj. Very good morning to you. Um, I'm referring to the Island newspaper this morning, an article by Kushan Subasinghe, uh, quoting His Excellency President Sirisena as saying that there's a need to uh, punish all those responsible for uh, the, uh, the bond scams, the bond racketeers, as it's called. Uh, what's your reaction to the President's uh, statement yesterday, uh, Shamindra? Uh, I think uh, we are very grateful I think the people are very grateful. Uh, the president has said it again. Uh, so um, it's up to him to ensure uh, that the, all the people uh, wanted in connection with this inquiry are uh, summoned before uh, the commission. I mean, it's up to the commission to summon them and, 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 uh, and ensure transparent investigation. And I believe uh, for us, uh, if, uh, if this uh, investigation continues. I don't think uh, this government can continue. Don't you think so? Well, it, it would be uh, an untenable position if uh, uh, the what has been described as perhaps the largest uh, for financial scam ever to afflict the people of Sri Lanka uh, post independence. If nothing is done about that, I don't believe that the people of this uh, of our country um, are people. Will be uh, will be happy and will be too enamoured about it. Yes, uh, 
President Sirisena is uh, head of this government and uh, he has no option but to ensure a transparent investigation because uh, millions have been of millions. Yeah. They have robbed the EPF and a uh, number of ministers of this government uh, had been summoned by the commission. Yeah. And uh, the commission is also likely to, to, to uh, uh, seek further clarification from the prime minister. Then, um, you know, it's, a, it's an issue. It's an issue created by the UMP and the failure on the part of the government uh, to, to act in early 2015. See, uh, for us, if they acted in 2015 after the first scam, Indeed. they would have prevented a far bigger second scam. But they allowed the robbery to continue. They allowed the same people to remain in power. Uh, therefore, they got together again and perpetrated a, a far bigger fraud in 2016, early part of 2016. And you must remember that the president appointed this commission in January 2017, right? So uh, we are glad that he appointed the commission, but it was a bit too late. Uh, but, now it's up, but, to his, uh, up to him, uh, his responsibility to, to, to see that all those who had been involved in this are punished. Of course, uh, Shaminda, we have to bear in mind that in, uh, in uh, early March uh, 2015, uh, when the, when the uh, f initial uh, uproar and concern uh, was was uh, mooted about the uh, issuance of this bond uh, at uh, at extortionately high interest rates at three percent more than what was prevalent um, when there was a uh, public debt uh, in totaling uh, four trillion rupees in in terms of bonds and and bills uh, yes. and uh, the president did call for a commission then only to be um, sort of uh, uh, beaten uh, after that by the announcement by the Prime Minister who was of course the Minister in charge of the subject and he um, appointed his uh, now uh, what I call the infamous Pitipana committee, the three member committee. Yes, uh, it's true for us. I agree with you. Yes. But the fact that, that this country suffered such a huge, huge loss due to this fraud. Yes. You will see that the government could have presented a far better budget today yeah. if this robbery did not take place. In fact, you raised this issue with several senior representatives of this Yahapalna government in yeah. your program. They could not respond properly because all of them know that if they did not allow this thing to happen, they could have done a lot better than this. This, this, uh, the economy is in severe trouble today. The government is in trouble today because of this fraud. But still, they are somehow trying to cover it up. That's right. So, uh, I mean, if not for the media, for us, I am sure they would have, you know, suppressed the whole investigation. It's the media. It is not the joint opposition. It's not the JPP. Of course, they raise this issue. But if the media, if the media gave it up, I'm sure they would have succeeded in suppressing the, the story. And, uh, and um, uh, Shaminder Ferdinand, what is, what is the feedback that you are getting from your sources uh, and so on about uh, the need uh, to, uh, for the Prime Minister to, uh, as a material witness to, give, uh, to be subject to cross-examination before the Commission of Inquiry? The Prime Minister should explain his conduct because he defended this transaction both in and outside Parliament. So therefore, I think it, it's his responsibility. I think the UMP expects all the people, those who had exercised their franchise for Yaha Parliament government, right, in 2015 January and 2015 August, expect the Prime Minister to explain himself. Because, and, um, you see, it's a, it's just such a um, uh, huge, huge fraud. And uh, okay. Shavindra Ferdinando, uh, as you know, um, uh, we invite our viewers to send their questions in. And um, uh, one of the questions that's come through is um, 
uh, and I shall pose that question to you, uh, Shaminda. Do you yes. think? Do you think that the petrol crisis is a diversionary tactic for the dear Prime Minister not to appear before the Bond Commission? No, I don't think so. I think uh, the petrol crisis uh, caused further problems for this government. You know, this government is in deep, deep trouble. The local government elections are coming nearly next year. And I mean, if you see, if you see the newspapers, the newspapers are full of issues, issues caused by this government. Actually, the, the, the joint opposition is a very weak force. The joint opposition is able to cause some issue today because of the mistakes made by this government. Indeed. They have, see, otherwise, uh, for us, if the central bank uh, robbery did not take place, if uh, the Yahapal administration did not appoint defeated candidates uh, as members of parliament and then made them ministers, I think they would have done a lot better than this. I think all the mistakes by Yahapal and the government uh, caused this situation today. And the petrol crisis is a very clear example of their pathetic failure to manage the uh, you, you know, uh, to maintain sufficient stocks in the country. That's and, what happened. Uh, uh, Shamindra, would you, would you agree with the viewer who says that it is the, um, it is the, the departure from uh, established processes that has caused all this corruption in this government? Uh, it's one reason. But, uh, you know, uh, yesterday evening, the Indian High Commission issued a statement. Yeah. Uh, the Indian High Commission said that uh, on the instruction of the government of India, I mean, obviously, uh, uh, Lanka India Oil Company has released a large stock of petrol to the CBC. So that means all these days, over the past six years, when people were waiting outside petrol stations, uh, the Indian oil company maintains stocks, but did not release. I think they should explain that situation also. I think uh, there's no point in blaming Arjuna Rangdung only. Yeah. I think it's the failure of the system. But one thing, we are glad. I think we should appreciate this government did not allow uh, inferior quality petrol to come in. Indeed. Because the uh, previous government, the previous government, you know that they did everything to ensure the supply, but they allowed bad petrol to come in. So we must uh, praise uh, uh, the Citizen and Commission Administration for preventing bad petrol from coming. Indeed. Uh, uh, and um, we, uh, uh, we have another, another viewer, uh, and, and two or three actually, same sort of question, and that is, uh, why should, uh, how can the, the blame be pinned on the Indian Oil Company, L uh, Lanka Indian Oil Company, LIOC, when they only have a market share of 16%? Uh, I am, uh, I must tell you for us, I think uh, the CPC uh, does, uh, does not have adequate uh, storage facility. That's one issue. And, and I must also tell you, uh, yesterday at the cabinet media briefing, uh, the government spokesman, Dr. Rajita Seva, alleged that this shortage was created by officials loyal to former President Mahindra Rajapaksa. Now, Mahindra Rajapaksa was defeated by the people of this country in January 2015. And for the government, uh, both uh, Minister Rajita Seva and uh, Minister Jayasri Jayasekara to claim that uh, the former president was so influential and powerful to get officials to disrupt the oil supply. I think uh, the president should inquire into that. I think uh, the ministers were trying to deceive the people. I think the government failed to maintain adequate stocks. Therefore, uh, they should take a responsibility for this situation. And you, uh, we cannot also um, ignore the uh, statement made by uh, Ranatunga yeah. that, that uh, sections of the government uh, put pressure on him to accept the rejected oil consignment. Well, in, in that case, in that case, uh, uh, I, I think uh, it would be incumbent on the minister to, to reveal to us who was trying to put pressure on him. Now we have another. Yeah. 
We have another question from uh, uh, a viewer who's gone back to the bond issue. Uh, don't forget, proceeds of the scam were used to buy large stakes in important companies, uh, uh, reportedly, you know, significant stakes. Uh, and this is a bad influence on, on, the ma on market conditions. Um, what do you say about that? There is no dispute over that one. I totally agree. And uh, yet, uh, the what what is your the, the people keep uh, commenting about uh, whether the prime minister why the prime minister is likely to appear only on the last uh, on the last day of the bond commission and thereafter they go into um, into uh, into recess I suppose whilst they are uh, then they're writing their report thereafter uh, but what I do you think? think? I think for us, uh, the appearance uh, or, or otherwise uh, by the Prime Minister is irrelevant now. The statement made by President Sirisena yesterday is a clear indication that the President believes an influencer section of the UMP is responsible for this fraud. That's it. And he made, that, he made it quite clear, of course, didn't he? It is very clear. Very clear. So, for 2015 fraud, 2016 fraud, the president insisted yesterday that a section of his government, his government is responsible. So, whether they uh, record evidence from the prime minister or uh, I mean, request other people to come back to the commission again, yeah. whatever happens, the president has very clearly stated that he believes the UMP is responsible. Right? He alleged that uh, he was being blamed by a section of his own government for this situation. Right? Uh, and so, so, they, so, I think the Attorney General's department cannot ignore that. Um, the evidence, I mean, the, uh, the way uh, people like uh, Mr. Dapula, the Livera, Mr. Yasanta Koda, they uh, conducted this investigation and the CID, I think it's very clear, I think the people of this country are fully aware of what had happened. Would, would, you be, would, you say, uh, would it be fair to say that uh, President Sirisena has reached the end of his tether and uh, his patience has run out and uh, he, he, fully, uh, he fully recognizes who is behind this uh, bond scam and he, uh, he knows that this uh, bond scam is uh, impacting on his presidency and it was, was it right of him to react the way he did or would you have liked to have seen him uh, reacting in, in, uh, in harsher terms? Yeah, I mean, the president must be angry with himself also because he, in the first place, he appointed Mr. Mahindran as a governor when the joint opposition and other various other parties pointed out that uh, he is not a Sri Lankan, he is a Singaporean, uh, the president appointed him. So the president uh, is now uh, he's paying a very heavy price for that. I mean, that's obvious. So he's angry. So, I mean, the president, is, uh, he, he must be upset that he intervened in uh, early part of 2015 and dissolved the government before Mr. Diogunu Sekhar submitted the COPE report. Right? Well, the president had to somehow uh, save his government. He did it best. But unfortunately, those who, uh, those who had been responsible for the 2015 fraud did it again. Right? Bit, so, yes. Uh, the, 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 the president, I think, uh, timed yesterday's speech ahead of the budget to, to show the world, to show the people that he believes a major fraud had taken place. And he expect the attorney general's department to act. And um, of course, uh, the the uh, what do you think? What is the feedback that you are getting? I keep asking this question. I asked it from uh, uh, a member of parliament yesterday, and ask you as well. What is the feedback you are getting? Do you uh, is there a feeling of despair amongst the people, uh, amongst your sources, or do you think that they are confident? Quietly confident that um, the there will be some resolution uh, towards the uh, at, about this bond scam, and that the the nation, the people, can recover some of the monies uh, that had been uh, the, uh, been we say lost by the EPF. But you know the EPF made a, 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 a small profit of five billion, but they could have made um, at least twelve and a half. 
to 13 billion more than that. So what, what, do you think uh, there will be a, a some, for, some form of acceptable resolution at the end of this commission and so on? Uh, an acceptable solution for us, I'm sure, will not be accepted, acceptable to the government, right? That's the problem. That's the problem. I mean, the people are disappointed with all political parties, that the UNP, SLAP, JO, JVP, TNA, all, right? They are disappointed because you will see that whatever the problems faced by this country, Whatever happens, the members of parliament have ensured that they received all the perks and benefits, right? Perks, privileges and benefits. Now, With all the economic problems in this country, the members of the parliament, all political parties decided that they should, the members should receive an additional, additional 100,000 rupees every month, right? So this budget will also, uh, will not make any change. That, that, that will continue. So you must realize whatever happens outside, whatever the allegations, corruption, whatever happens, the members of the parliament, when it comes to their perks and privileges, they ensure they get everything possible. You know? Now recently there was a statement issued by the Honorable Speaker. He said that on his request, the government of China, China has uh, given, uh, has invited more than 100 members of parliament. Indeed. Now, now I simply cannot understand why China invites, at the expense of the Chinese public, over more than 100 members of Sri Lankan parliament. Um, right? uh, now then, we, we so need I to... Uh, we, I think it's a... Now, Shamin uh, yeah. Ferdinando, uh, don't go away. Stay on the line whilst we go out and take a short commercial break. Don't go away, we'll be back after all. This is Newsline. First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And uh, welcome back to Newsline. And Shaminda Ferdinando, are you still there? For us, morning. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> Very good. Uh, thank you. And um, we, we've got a question from another viewer who's asking When do you think, uh, Mr. Ferdinando, will this government stop blaming the previous government and get on with the important uh, quest of good governance? Uh, no, no they, they will never do that. Now, yesterday, as I told you a couple of minutes ago, the government spokesman, Rajita, blamed the former president for the oil shortage, right? So, naturally, I mean, these people have no solution to any problem, any problem faced by the people. So, they naturally will continue to blame the former president. So, uh, so don't be surprised. Whatever happens in this country, that they will blame... Have you, have you got fuel queues uh, in Nigambo, where you are? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, Shaminda Ferdinand, thank you very much uh, for having been on Newsline. And um, we are now uh, joined by Dr. Nalinda Jayatissa of the JVP. Uh, thank you very much for battling your way through the traffic this morning. Yeah. Um, now then, why, in your view, the, the JVP have made them uh, strong allegations that uh, this, the fuel crisis is actually uh, man-made um, and it's been made because of either incompetence or mismanagement or a combination of both. Uh, the, yeah. You'll say that the term tender, uh, the term contract to supply fuel has been ignored. They've gone for spot purchasing and uh, uh, it's all apparently a big mess. Is that true? Yes, of course. And uh, fortunately, that lady we expected uh, for a long time, for a few days, yes. the Nurska lady, yes. uh, it reached uh, 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. So uh, the current crisis will settle uh, maybe uh, tomorrow morning. It will uh, complete settle. Anyway, uh, we have to uh, take that experience. Uh, we, we want to maintain enough storage mm. at least uh, for one month otherwise uh, we will face this trouble again and again so this is totally due to uh, inefficiency of the management as well as the uh, wrong political decisions mm. made not 
uh, in a recent past, but till from 2001-2003 uh, period, mm -hmm. the UNP government. So uh, the 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 blame, the majority part of major part of the blame uh, goes to the should go to the government mm -hmm. because their responsibility to maintain enough uh, fuel stock to distribute uh, all over the country. Otherwise, uh, blaming to LIOC or these... Uh, Do you think the chairman of the CPC should yeah. be changed then? Yes, of course, because uh, minister is... I mean, minister is new one. He's, he, uh, yeah, but the chairman the, is yeah. the, the chap who's doing... He's, the, he's also the managing director of CPC. Yes. Uh, I think the government should uh, do a special investigation uh, regarding these officials uh, responsible for this yeah. because why they uh, can't maintain uh, enough storage uh, for uh, three weeks or one month. And, and I, I can't imagine that uh, just because um, the IOC, um, just because one 30,000 uh, metric ton uh, yeah. parcel was rejected that this whole crisis has come about because they only have 16 percent of the market yes of course there are actually there are three reasons happened at once yeah. one thing the rejection of uh, the LIOC shipment yeah second thing uh, delaying of the Sipetco shipment yeah third one is problem with the refinery yeah but these three causes happen in the past time by time yeah but this first time that happened at once all together so, all together Anyway, the major cause is delaying of the CPET cost shipment. Mm. It may happen in the future because of this mm. war, terrorist attacks, and for mm. natural by the natural forces, yeah. Yeah. the uh, delaying shipment is uh, regular. But the the how we face such a problem, main issue is to maintain enough storage. Mm. So we have facilities. At least if we use. 10 oil tanks in Trincomalee, yeah. uh, its capacity uh, is 10,000 uh, metric ton per one. Yeah. So uh, that's why uh, CPC uh, wanted 10 oil tanks for their for own. That, yes. For that, that's why uh, previous minister submitted a cabinet paper, Mr. Yeah. Virak Kodi. But unfortunately, uh, two months later, Prime Minister submitted another cabinet paper to reject that uh, uh, yes, we, yes, we have to bear in mind that it is this Prime Minister's, under his watch, yeah. uh, that uh, LIOC, the LIOC transaction was carried out. And uh, <coughs> actually, sorry. sorry, actually, we have a chance now to uh, abolish or to discontinue the lease agreement between the Sri Lankan government and the LIOC. Oh, do we? We should do. Okay. You mean you mean we have a reason now? Yes, we have reason. Right now, now we have reason, and this is uh, actually illegal lease agreement. They have defaults, so it, from the Sri Lanka government side, we can take some actions against uh, to violate it, to violate this uh, lease agreement. Right. I see. Um, so that will be another file for the Attorney General's department. <laughs> yes. More, more delays. We have to recruit more uh, officers. More to officers. Yes. So all those young uh, uh, people there. Now then, uh, we, we, we're coming to the end of, uh, the, uh, um, of our program this morning. Uh, but the lady in Nevesca uh, with 40,000 metric tons yes. is um, by the uh, discharge point. And hopefully, uh, this uh, whole business will get back to normal. But it's a shocking indictment on this government that um, two and a half years, nearly three years uh, into this government, that they've managed to cost the central bank an awful lot of money to do with two bonds in February 2015 and in March 2016. And yet, they haven't been able to put aside some money for a rainy day and to have a sufficient stock of fuel and instead are now dancing the merry jingle trying to blame the Indian oil company and anybody else excepting themselves because this is nothing but a poor performance, poor management and uh, would, you, would you agree with that? Is it poor management? Yes, definitely. Unprofessional management. Yes. If this was a company, that person would be sacked by now. 
definitely and uh, special prop goes to the towards the chairman as well as the officials, officials of the, the CCC. CCC. Uh, on that note, um, <clears throat> Dr. Nalinda Jayathis, thank you very much for being on Newsline. I know we uh, couldn't get here on time, but there you go. That's the way the cookie crumbles. And that is the way the cookie crumbled on Thursday, the 9th of November 2017 on Newsline. Take care. God bless. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali.